Hey guys, how is it all going? Today I have something interesting for you. My friends over at photomanipulation.com are giving away a huge free stock bundle and they asked me if I could create an artwork with those images. Well, you know what? This stock bundle is just crazy. It has more than 100 premium high quality figure stocks and I just can't believe they are giving away all this for free. It has figures and poses covering all genres, be it sci-fi, historical, horror, you name it. Plus they are very well curated. If you are a book cover designer, these are just a treasure trove for you. Plus they have also very thoughtfully included backsides which can be very handy when creating concept arts. And I know they are pretty hard to find. And for your regular photo manipulations, they are just super amazing. Well, if you want to get them for free, you can use the link below in the description section of this video. You would just need to sign up to the newsletter and the free stock bundle will be delivered straight to your inbox. Now, as I started to create an artwork using one of the figures from here, I was bombarded with ideas. With so many options, I kept wondering if I would do an action special ops scene or a sci-fi cyberpunk one or even a steampunk composition. But among all, this lady caught my attention and her spread out hands intrigued me to add some sinister spells and maybe spice them up with some dragons. Alright, without further ado, let's get into it and let's create. I started by creating a 3x3 grid and placed our subject on the left one third position of the canvas. The rule of third kinda always works well to make your compositions look balanced and pleasing to the eyes. Then I used Photoshop subject selection tool to quickly create a selection around our subject and pressed Q on the keyboard to activate the quick mask mode. In this quick mask mode you can paint with black and white just like you would do in a regular mask and refine the current selection. You can again press Q to get out of the quick mask mode into the selection mode. I dropped the base image that would create the main city backdrop. Matching the clothes of our central character, I went with some gothic buildings and architecture. Moreover, this city image has a lot of fog and very good depth with the atmospheric perspective and that will save a great deal of time in the future. To mask out the buildings in this image, I used the channel separation method. I went into the channels tab and checked the red channel to have the greatest contrast. Then I duplicated it and used levels to intensify the contrast so that the buildings looked close to black and the sky looked close to white. Then I control clicked on the thumbnail of that layer to select the white pixels, re-enabled the RGB channel, went back to the main image and used that selection to create the mask. I fine-tuned any imperfections in the selection by painting with black or white on the layer mask. I coupled it with a gloomy sky as I wanted the final image to be pretty dark and dreary. After placing some structures to frame the composition and creating the impression that she is standing on some ledge, I thought it would be the best time to draw out the perspective lines so that the buildings remain correctly aligned. I used the city backdrop image as the reference points and started creating paths with the pen tool. With the vector paths created using the pen tool, I can easily tweak them to align them with the hard edges of the buildings. Then I simply used the stroke path option to create colored brush lines and deleted the vector paths. Ideally, for a one-point perspective, there should be three sets of grid lines, one for the horizontal edges, one for the vertical edges, and one for the depth or the thickness. Then I can use those perspective lines to place additional buildings in the scene and they will not go out of alignment. I started dropping new building photos to fill up the composition. I mostly used Photoshop's sky selection tool to quickly select the sky and then use a quick mask mode as I mentioned previously to fine tune the edges. Then the alignment was pretty easy thanks to the perspective lines. Wherever needed, I used free transform distort section to align them. Well, this building does not match the perspective at all, but I would get away with it as I will put a whole lot of smoke and fog on top of it soon. Time to put the big bad dragons. I guess the story goes like this, she summons some hellish dragons and they are going to wreak havoc. By the way, all the images used in this photo manipulation are free stock images. I will add the link in the description section, you can check them out if you want. With the dragons placed, I added a thick plume of smoke. It serves several functions. First, it would create a nice screen separating our main character from the background. Then I can easily get away with not adding fine details to the buildings in that area. Also, it would help establish the depth of the scene with fog and haze. 
And finally, I wanted to give it a feel that the sorceress has summoned the doomed dragons performing some forbidden rituals. And what can be the best time to do that other than an eclipse? I simply put the eclipse image to screen blending mode and then spent some time fine tuning the placement of the various elements in the composition. I wanted the scene to be windy, so I used the lasso tool to slice out the loose parts of the trace onto a new layer and then used the warp from the free transform tool to create the windswept look. And if it's windy, her hair also needs to react, right? For that, I used a simple round brush to draw the loose strands of hair. I used my pen tablet to control the size of the hair strands. For drying the hair like this, try using multiple layers instead of one. Draw the darker strands on the bottommost layer and the lighter strands on top of each other. This would help to keep the strands not only nice and isolated, but also greatly help in building up the volume. The leftmost building looked a bit smudgy as I scaled it to a much larger size, so I manually painted to bring back some of the lost detail. I made the smoke a lot fainter and corrected any missing buildings. Before moving with the color grading, let's do a little bit of retrospection. You all seem to like the thought process behind the artwork, so here goes behind the scenes for this one. Before finalizing this design, I tried out multiple versions. The first version is pretty straightforward, it's good, but recently I have developed a knack for creating scenes with more stress on the environment, and it lacked that. So I tried something else. Next is this one. It's nice, with a sense of tension and action, but here also I could not do much work on the environment. So I tried something different like this. It's cool, but the dragon was not matching the angle and perspective of the scene. And I spent some more time searching for other dragons and ended up with something like this. I thought about adding some army that is getting torched by the fire, but honestly there was too much going on in this scene and it lacked focus. Also the castles in the backdrop did not match the sorcerer's dress, so I finally decided to take this approach with a gothic architecture style and kept the composition simple but left some room to work on the environment. Alright, let's start with the color grading. I started by adding a curves adjustment layer on top of the sky layer and dragged the top right node of the RGB channel to darken it up. Then I clipped similar curves on top of the buildings to darken them up and added solid color overlays for the haze effect. I did the same thing for all of the buildings but tweaked the other channels in the curves if needed to match the color with the surrounding. I added a master curve on top of the background elements to create a subtle bluish violet tone. I plan to keep the color scheme as red and grayish violet, so that will be my primary focus. For the dragons, I clipped a hue saturation, I checked the color raise option to knock off all colors and added solid colors for the haze effect. This atmospheric haze is strongest at the distant and lightest in the front, and it is an essential element to create depth in a scene. If you want to learn more about this topic, you can check out my in-depth video on creating depth with the atmospheric perspective. The link should be in the description section and I think you'll find that video helpful. Time to color grade our main character. As always, I clipped curves and dragged the top right node of the RGB channel down to darken it up. Then similarly, I dropped the curves in the red and green channels to introduce a bluish tint. On top of that, I clipped a same darkened up curves, but in its layer mask, I hit the areas that should be lit by the faint light coming from the sky on the right. After some minor corrections here and there, I moved on to creating the magic. For this, I used a brilliant technique that I learned from Max Asabin. You can visit his channel, Asabin Art, to learn in detail about this technique. For this, at first, I needed to add a gradient map in the color of the glow. Preferably the black node is kept at the black color and all other midpoint nodes are replaced with colors of choice. Only the brightness of the colors are maintained in an increasing order further away from the black point. Then a solid black color base is added below it and now if I paint with any lighter colors in between these two layers, the gradient map will interact to reveal the color. Then all is needed to do is group this layer stack and change the blending mode of the group to screen which will knock off the black base and the soft light glows will elegantly show up on the main image. I used a soft run brush and controlled the flow and opacity with my pen tablet to draw the flaming magic on her hands. I 
made her hand and fingers glow with the magic and also used the same preparation to add some quick highlights on her dress. I copied the same group and used it to add the glowing trails of light around the dragon's eyes. I felt lighting up the eyes would not only make them look cool, but also tie into the narrative that the dragons are linked to the same magic. If I wanted to hide any part of the magic, I simply needed to paint with black. As the darkest point in the gradient map was set to black, my painted black was replaced with the black from the gradient map and the screen blending mode of the parent group knocked it off, rendering it invisible. For the additional highlights, I used my usual technique with the curves. I added a simple curve with a boosted red channel and painted on the layer mask in appropriate positions. I wanted to create a magical fire burning beneath, so the light direction is adjusted accordingly. added some quick dabs of dark color on the left side of the sky. The intention is to create a nice gradient and at the same time make the background on the left not too bright and help the main character stand out. With that done, I added some overall color gradings and decided to take it further from there. I added two color lookup tables, Crisp Warm and Kodak 5205 and changed both of their blending modes to color. The second one added an unwanted blue tint on the left so I masked it off from there. On top of that, I added a curves with boosted highlights but darkened the shadows. Time to work on the details. Since the source of the light is behind the dragons, there should be an effect on the wings which is technically called subsurface scattering. You'll see it happen on our ears when light is shining from behind, part of the light passes through the tissue and they look red because of the underlying blood vessels. So the same thing will happen on the wings, also it would add a much needed color variation to the dragons. I simply added a layer in light and blending mode and brushed some dark red color. For the highlights, I clipped the curves with pumped up RGB channel and painted on the layer mask, keeping in mind that the faint highlight coming from the top right direction. For the shadows on the opposite side, the process is simple. I clipped another curves with dropped RGB channel and painted in the required places. Since the light source is not strong and there is much ambient light from the sky, I kept the shadows to a minimum. I often kept adding haze in between the objects to work on the depth. On top of everything, I took a blank layer in soft light blending mode and dabbed some colors for the ambient light. I fine-tuned some more stuff here and there, like correcting some buildings and some haze, lightening or darkening them up relative to the backdrop and the foreground objects. And also on a blank layer, I added some colors to the walls and roofs of some of the buildings to make them stand out in the haze. I added a tattered look to the wings. In my mind, it served two purposes. It can add a more zombie-like feeling to the dragons, and also it will break the monotony of the large wing shapes and make the lighter sky peep through the storm areas. I added some extra dash of dark tones to create a variation in the red color and give a textured organic look. I kept painting additional colors wherever necessary and it's just a matter of personal preference. I also introduced a little bit of blur to the distant elements as they won't be that crisp and clear like the foreground objects. Finally, towards the end, I added a snow overlay. It just felt to me that the composition was looking too clean, so a particle effect should spice it up a bit. The snow overlay in color dodge blending mode seemed to work best here. 
and I added a little bit of grain as well on top of it. After that I realized the highlights on the dragons should be a little stronger. So corrected that accordingly and worked on the shadows as well. Finally it felt that a lot was happening in the top half of the composition compared to the bottom. So I dropped some fire spark images, changed the blending mode to screen or lighten and used hue saturation to shift them to a red tone matching the color of the magic. I think that would also justify the red glow coming from the bottom. With some finishing touches done, here goes the final result. Do let me know in the comments if you liked the artwork and found the video helpful. If so, please share it with your friends and if you like my videos, do subscribe to the channel that would greatly motivate me to create more videos like this. And don't forget to grab the free stock bundle from photomanipulation.com using the link below, it's pretty amazing. Well then, I will see you in the next video, until then, enjoy creating.